Hello everyone, this is Sanjay Parashar. Welcome back to the channel. This is going to be the second part of our XSLT tutorial series. In our first part, we discussed about creating schema based on XML document, then transforming data from one XML format to another XML format. Today, we will learn about implementing conditions within XSLT. So essentially, there are two ways to achieve conditions in XSLT. One is if statement and the second is choose when otherwise statement. And they both work in very similar fashion. You will see that in a minute when we'll do the demo. The only downside of using if condition is that there is no default branch for if statement in XSLT. That means there is no else statement. However, you can still achieve that by playing smartly with the code, but still, if your code have a requirement um, to have a default branch, then I will recommend to use choose when in XSLT. Today we will be using both if as well as choose when to achieve transformation logic. So by the end of the demo, it will all be clear to how to use if and how to use choose when otherwise. So let's see what we are doing today. So like our demo one, I have the source XML example, target XML example, and what will be the generic solutions, regardless of the technology, how we can achieve this solution. So we'll discuss that. So this is our source XML, right? It has students as root element. It has around four students at the moment. It could be more, doesn't matter. It has uh, a student ID, then a name, subject, subject name, and a score for that particular subject. And the target statement or the target XML looks something like this. So it has a candidate. So this time our root element is also different. Then it will have different candidates. It will have candidate ID, then name, and then message depending on what is the number, what is the subject score for that particular student. We will give uh, a message whether that student has passed the exam or failed the exam. So. Let's discuss the solution now. So let's say the assumption is that passing marks is uh, 40. So if it is 40 and one more, then we need to send a message saying congratulations. If it is less than 40, then we'll need to send message to inform them that sorry, you have failed the exam. And in the solution, as we can see, we'll have to loop over each student and then id will be mapped to id name will be mapped to name and there will be if condition on subject score if it is less than uh, 40 if it is less than 40 then of course uh, we'll say sorry to inform you then the name of that student you have failed your then the exam name and exam and Otherwise, it will say congratulations. So this is a general solution. So any technology if you use and you want to transform source XML to target XML, that's the logic it will you will need to achieve. In our XSLT, we don't have else statement, so we'll figure out a different way to do that. You'll see that in, in the demo. So without any further delay, let's start with the demo. So as you can see in my JDeveloper, I have a so a project XSLT tutorial that we created in our last tutorial. If you have not seen the part one, then I recommend you to watch that first and then come here. If you're especially if you're if you're new with XSLT, uh, then we have schemas and the demo one XSLT that we have. Right. So now let's create schema based on the XML documents that we have here. I have shown that uh, already in my last tutorial, so I will fast forward this whole thing now. All right, so we have our uh, demo to source data, which has a student, student, and then we subject has name and score, and we have target saying candidate ID, name, and the message. So now let's create our XSLT. Okay. 
in source, we'll select the source element for demo two. And in the target, we'll select the target like we did in demo one. So nothing new till now. As explained in demo one, if we map this, it will create a for each loop on top of it. Just like that, we'll map it again. And let's save it. So now, candidate ID is, candidate ID will need to be mapped to a student ID. Here you go. Name needs to be mapped with name. If we go to source, so far we have created a for loop just like this. For each student, candidate ID will be the student ID and the name will be the name. And now our conditions. So the message varies based on the condition that we are going to set uh, in the subject score. So for that, we'll right click on message and we'll see XSL instructions where we have some information here. So either we can use choose or if. Let's start with if. So we say if, now we want to set a condition if the score, and let's go to the source now. So right now it says if we have subject score and we wanna say less than 40. Now what you'll notice here is that there is an error because this less than sign means something in XML word. So it could, it is giving us this syntax error. So rather than this less than we can use and LT colon. This is also less than. So here we are saying subject score less than 40. Then we need to give a certain message. So let's go to the design. We'll say the message will be the concatenation of few values. So if it is less than 40, then as per our example, if it is less than 40, we will say sorry to inform you. And then we'll give the name of the student, sorry to inform you, then student. And then we'll have a comma, you have failed your. So there is a comma. And then you have failed your then the exam, subject name, exam, period. Let's click on OK. If there will be some syntax or some formatting error that we can take care of later on. Let's go to the source. Here it's saying if Subject score is less than 40. We are saying that, sorry, you have failed your exam. Otherwise, we want to congratulate that person. So I have just copied the whole if. If we'll say greater than equal to 40, then we want to say congratulations. you have passed your certain exam. Let's save it and now I think this is it. Uh, that's how you work with if condition. And now let's test it. You go to design, 
click on this test we'll generate a dummy source xml file and then we will update that file with the file that we want to use the data that we want to use let's click on ok and now let's change the student values with what we want from here i'll take all the students like this I'll save this and now I'll test it with my data. And that's how our target looks like, which is absolutely similar to our intended target. So it says congratulations, uh, the name, and it is fetching the exam name and based on the condition, it is working absolutely fine. Now, let's see that rather than if, if I want to use choose and when. So what I'll do is I'll comment this out and I will choose, uh, I'll use choose when and otherwise to achieve the same logic. It's going to be fairly easy. Like I shared with you guys, uh, for if we came to the design and we selected message came here selected like this but you don't have to completely rely on this ui you can you can simply change everything within the code itself so for choose and when rather than following this ui let's do it directly in the source so xsl colon this will give you the option is that what you want to do so I'll say choose and the moment I do this it will close this because this is an IDE and it is helping me making smart choices when it comes to syntaxes. XSL colon when and there is something called otherwise also XSL colon otherwise so otherwise is the default section within choose like we did for if we had to use like the opposite condition of first if so when there are multiple conditions it will be difficult to create a default branch with if statement but it will be way easier to have just an otherwise so when any condition that we give in when, if that is not working, it will go to the otherwise. So essentially that's it. This is what the syntax is. Inside choose, there is a child element of when and otherwise. There can be n number of when, but there has to be only one otherwise. So in test, we can simply copy this. So when score is less than 40, do something, otherwise do something else. So we can copy this whole message here. And we can copy this message in the otherwise section. So there is no condition test for otherwise because it's a default word. So anything which is not being taken care with when condition, we can use otherwise. And otherwise it's not a mandatory tag. So if you want, you can simply use choose and when and no otherwise. Then it will work similar to if conditions. So I'll save it and I'll go to the design. I'll change my source a little bit. So let's say rather than Henry, let me give my name Sanjay Parashar. And let me change this to 19. Ah. and let's test it there you go it is working absolutely fine similar to what how the if condition worked so this is it that's that's how easy XSLT is uh, that's how if and when conditions work within XSLT 
So in subsequent videos, I'm going to tell you how variables can be used, how a variable can be created in Excel, XSLT and how they can be used to achieve the transformation logic that we want to achieve. We'll also learn what are the significance of templates, sub templates, what are the difference between apply template and call template. And there are some very important functions of XSLT, how you can use Java in XSLT. So a lot more to cover in subsequent uh, videos. So stay tuned. Thank you so much for your time. Take good care of yourself and have a nice rest of the day. Thank you.